dodge bullets, baby. Ah! This is beyond fairy tale. It's inconceivable. There it is. Doyle's got it. Eastgate steps into poker history. This is the They are among the most feared players in the world. You guys want to play some poker with me? Let's go, baby. They have won a combined 18 World Series of Poker bracelets. I'm hoping to get to 30 eventually. The only other thing they have in common... Buddy, you're an idiot. ...is their name. I just can't believe this. Phil Hellmuth's brashness and showmanship at the World Series is unmatched. Many times came back and had all the chips. Phil Ivey quietly goes about his business while letting his play do all the talking. I think I have a very good chance of winning this tournament. Helmuth! Oh, this idiot! Ivy! We just look at things differently. Two of the game's greats continue their quest for main event history tonight. Welcome back to the 40th Annual World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky with Norman Chad. I'm Lon McCarran. Here at the Rio, this second day two session of the main event continues. A massive field still remains, including some of the best players in the game like Tom Dwan, Jen Harmon, and J.C. Tran. Big names outside of poker like NBA star Jordan Farmer. And was here now, you know, it's time to play. Anthrax guitarist Scott Ian and actor Lou Diamond Phillips are also in the field. And at our featured table, a very well-known player who is a serenader of a different sort. Phil Helmuth has been in full throw tonight and usually mixing it up with a poker pro half his age, his latest foil, 22-year-old Ben Springers. Wow, they're down to like 2,400 right now. Yeah, 2,400 left. I've won tournaments with 2,400 people in them before. 600 players made it through the first day two session. We've got about 1,800 left in this field. Action will start on 22-year-old Ben Springers on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Pocket Camp Jack 10 offsuit. I think Springers came here today with one thing in mind, kill Phil. He limps in for 600. Matt Calhoun, a high-tech guy from Phoenix, ace-queen offsuit. He attended Babson College in Wellesley, Mass. I believe they are the Raging Cajuns. He limps as well. 22-year-old, a recent grad from the University of Iowa, Ian Schechter with nine four spades limps. Uh, he's a kid with a dream. Phil Helmuth in the small blind. 1989 world champ. Looks down at eight deuce offsuit. Well, that's in the neighborhood of the cards he's been playing here on day two. He calls. And 22-year-old, another 22-year-old from Copenhagen, Daniel Vorbeck in the big blind seven tray. And he checks his option. Why does it always seem that Phil's in the middle of the table lording over the, the peasants and feudal workers? Five players in for the minimum. The flop is deuce eight. King Helmuth hits two pair. Nobody else caught anything. Helmuth check, checks. Check. Vorbeck checks. Springers now. He's going to get restless with his jack 10. He bets 2,300. It's as if Phil expected his buddy Ben to fire out with nothing. Calhoun and Schechter fold. Phil Helmuth makes the call. Of course he's got to come along. Well, it's the Phil and Ben show. An old-fashioned buddy comedy featuring two generations of prickly players. Vorbeck folds, so heads up. Phil and Ben. Heads up. Turn card now. It's another king, king of clubs, and that gives Springer some outs. Helmuth doesn't like that card. His small two pair are now counterfeited. Helmuth Check. checks. Springers was 481st at last year's main event. He Check. checks behind Phil. Well, ben decides his squat douche really is nothing. River card five of clubs. Helmuth first to act, and he's reaching, and Springers folds immediately. Fire. That was the worst <laughs> card in the deck for me, the king ball. Springers cool. playing speed poker there. Could have bluffed me that time, kid. Ah, a missed opportunity for Ben. I said yes. Let him bluff it off. But no king. Bam. Never one to shy away from telling his opponents where they went wrong, and that's one reason the target on his back is so big. Norman, we are nearly through with the day twos, but the main event has barely begun. And yet, even at this early stage, with the players remaining in the field, it's hard not to think about some of the tantalizing possibilities. Well, let me tantalize you, my friend. What if Phil Ivey won? He'll be on the short list for greatest ever, and I'll actually look smart for once. What if Dennis Phillips makes the final table in back-to-back -back years? That would outdan Dan Harrington. And what if Phil Helmuth is around in the end? He started this main event in a loincloth. If he makes the November 9, he might show up in lingerie. 
Luckily for us, for the moment, Phil is back to wearing his familiar black attire. 20 years ago, he became the youngest ever to win the main event. In the field today is the man who took that title. Defending champ Peter Eastgate was 22 when he won last year. Right now, he's all in with ace nine off behind Manuel Kuriger's pocket queens. One year after winning it all, Eastgate looks like he might not survive day two. He does pick up an up and down straight draw on the flop. Kerger is still a three to two favorite. Eastgate still at risk. Turn card now is a six and Eastgate hit the straight. That's why I'm the champ. <laughs> River card is a 10 of hearts and Eastgate will win it and double up. Kerger's thinking, did you say you're the champ or the, the luckiest player on the table? 39,000 chips for Peter Eastgate. There is 95 champ Dan Harrington wearing a brace today. He told us it helps ease the strain on his neck over the long hours at the tables. I've never needed a brace. I always get knocked out quick. He will not pick up any chips there as he lays it down. I wish I had one. In 2003, when Harrington made the first of two straight main event final tables, Phil Ivey just missed, finishing in 10th place after getting rivered by Chris Moneymaker, and Phil is in action today. Phil just re-raised Jonas Molander, a Swedish pro, pre-flop. I'm all in. Molander moves all in on Ivy. Molander had originally raised, Ivy re-raised, and now Molander re-raises all in. Under 10 minutes. These guys have just about even chip stacks. Ivy this year says he's more patient as a tournament player, not as prone to risk his chips as often as he once did. Phil has him covered, but just by a few thousand chips. A call. Ivy call. makes call. the call. All in on a call. 304. Ivy shows kings and ace king for Molander. Ivy in good shape, but he's an ace away from being crippled. All right, the flop is Trey 5 9. The kings are still good for Phil. Remember, Molander all in. Ivy almost all in trying to dodge an ace. Turn card is a six. No help to Molander. Molander awaits his fate. Ivy awaits the knockout. Molander needs an ace. River card is a jack, and Molander will give all his chips to Phil Ivey, in effect doubling up the seven-time bracelet winner. We battled that up. That is a long conversation for Phil Ivey, and it might have been in Swedish. A scary sight indeed. The best player in the world with one of the biggest chip stacks in the room. Welcome back to the Rio in the 40th Annual World Series of Poker. At table two is a member of the first November 9, Dennis Phillips. And once again, he's brought a few of his supporters, and that truck horn has made the trip as well. You know, I usually wear black, so I wouldn't fit in with the Dennis clones. While Brazilian pro Maria Marinic is watching, Dennis Phillips leads with Ace King against Paul Smith, who just picked up a club flush draw. 3,000. 3,000 is the bet from Phillips. Phillips tries to buy it. Yeah, Smith goes over the top, all in. Smith has picked a good spot to push on a draw. Did I misplay this hand that badly? Phillips just has ace high. Dennis needs over 13,000 to call. I don't think he got anything. And he does. Nice call. But Dennis likes what he sees. A Cardinals-Cubs matchup. The Cubs never win. No club. River card. No club, Phillips wins, and once again for the Cubs, it's wait till next year. <laughs> oh, my friend, you're a sick puppy. I am sick, Leave I'm telling alone, you that. Though. I absolutely <laughs> admit, I am a Mr. sick puppy. Phillips. That's, that's just bad. I wonder if he takes that horn into the restaurant. <laughs> It has been a good day for the Philippians and their leader, Dennis Phillips. Dennis has almost doubled up here on day two so far. He's up to 120,000. Let's take a look at the leaders in this field. Phil Ivey, the fourth biggest stack in the room. Watch out, world. But everyone today chasing Troy Weber with over 400,000 chips. He in the third biggest stack. Dan Bilzerian are jousting right now at the same table. Bilzerian put out a bet on the river. Weber, an account manager. Bilzerian, a venture capitalist. Weber made the call. And on the showdown, Weber will take that pot. The chip leader gets stronger. Weber's nickname is Mr. Miserable. He, he beat me to it. <laughs> Elsewhere, Kent Center is finding the main event to be a diversion from living with an incurable cancer. With his wife, Patty, looking on, he's fulfilling a dream to play at the World Series. At the table, pro Billy Gaze has just moved all in on Kent. 
Kent makes the call to put Gaze is at risk. Kent turns over Ace King of Hearts. Billy Gaze is all in with Pocket Kings. Gaze has to feel a little shaky in this spot. Gaze is still ahead after the Queen on the turn. Center can still knock out Gaze with an Ace or a Heart. The River card is a four of spades, and Gaze's will double up through Kent Center. The likable Billy Gaze's 30 World Series caches, no bracelet. Well, losing a hand doesn't come close to comparing with what Center has had to deal with, but being here in Las Vegas with his wife's support is a true testament to how much they mean to each other. I worked with Lowe's, unloading the trucks and getting all the product out in the shelves. It's a tough job. I could barely stand. Uh, there was a lot of nights, you know, I couldn't walk. And uh, when I went to the doctor, he sent me for an MRI, and that's when they discovered I've got cancer. I had tumors in my spine and all over my body. So, yeah, it's been kind of tough. But, uh, having children and my wife, you know, I can't quit. He's done everything in a positive manner. I am so proud of him. I always call him my treasure, and that's what he's been since the first day I met him. He has made our life the best that it could ever be. There's always three things that he always wanted to do. One was be an astronaut, one was to drive an Indy car, and one was to play in a Pro Series poker tournament. When you're raising kids, $10,000 is, you know, it's a lot of money. She just got on the internet and started emailing everybody. People responded faster than I ever thought they would. I was asleep on the sofa and she woke me up and told me that, uh, that I was going to go to Las Vegas. I consider myself lucky. I have nothing to lose. It's just been a dream and I uh, hope it continues on. Kent came through day one with 55,000 chips and says being here has been the time of his life, meeting celebrities and poker pros and playing in the main event. Back to the featured table where Phil Helmuth has been running the show, playing and winning with any two cards. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the toe. There's the tiger. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. <laughs> Action is on Ben Springer's Jack 10 offsuit. I am still undecided on where I stand on Ben Springer's. A raise to 1600 Vincent Mack owns a bar down in Florida, lives in Palm Bay. With pocket nines, he makes the call. If he owns a bar, it'd be nice if he'd buy me a drink. Matt Calhoun on the button with King Ten of Clubs. He's a chief technology officer. I have no idea what they do. He makes the call. Do they boss around technology? <laughs> Ian Schechter in the small blind lays it down. Helmuth in the big blind. Queen nine off. In the big blind getting six to one on a call here. Yeah, the new Phil Helmuth says let's play. Percentages favor Calhoun pre-flop, though Mac has the best hand with the nines. The flop six, five, ten. That hits two players. Calhoun a pair of tens with a king kicker. Springer is a pair of tens, but only a jack kicker. Phil first to act. Got no help. He checks. Springer's. Springer's plays high stakes online poker. He's pretty active. You just never know if he has a hand or not. He bets the second best hand with 4,200. Max should fold those nines and, and buy me a beer. He likes them well enough to make the call, though. I'm thirsty. Now Calhoun with the best hand. Just with a call. I'm sure Calhoun thought about raising. And Phil lays it down. And he'll just concentrate on uh, Peebo Bryson. They all love to see Phil out of the hand after the day that he has had. It's a jack on the turn. That hits Springers. He leads with jacks up. And now he's betting with the best hand. He makes it 8,500. 8, Actually, I wouldn't mind a daiquiri <laughs> or a stinger. I haven't had a stinger forever. He's got time to make one. He's going to fold. Calhoun now. And Calhoun wondering if that board really hits Springers at all. I'm all in. Uh-oh. Raising all in. Call. And a quick call from Springers. He may play Calhoun's executioner. Yeah, two pair for Springers and Calhoun now all but out of here. Boy, Calhoun in a world of hurt. Can you please? Penn says, not going to happen, buddy. One time. Calhoun has to have a king. He got it. Yeah. 
Nice. Wow. Whew. Calhoun, it's a miracle card to stay alive. And Ben Springer's wow. taking that bad beat better than his sparring partner, Phil Hamuth, would have. And with that wow. win, Matt Calhoun is the proud owner of almost 69,000 chips. I had a feeling it might be there. I had a feeling I, I made a straight. Yeah, I wasn't feeling good either. I had a feeling I was going to bust him uh, before the flop. You got your chance now. Helmuth won't show any pity for his short-stacked rival. Springers can only hope to get back some chips and take another shot at the poker brat. The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Welcome back to the Rio. We're over at the feature table. Phil Helmuth may be looking at the last hand of the tournament for Ben Springers. Ben's all in with Ace King. Mark Herberholz ahead with pocket queens after the flop. I do not want to see the Phil and Ben show canceled. They have a nice chemistry. Well, Ben's not looking too confident in this. Turn card now is another Queen Springers on the edge. Herberholz in command now. Springers needs to make a straight, a jack, or he is gone. And now the river card is an eight, and Ben Springers yeah. knocked out of the main event by Mark Herberholz. Nice. Good luck, guys. Springers seems snake bit, kept coming up second best. He played well, man. He got all this money in with top two, and yeah, maybe Phil made a new friend. He seems almost sorry to see Springers hit the rail. Out in the field, another 22-year-old is saying his goodbyes. Tom Dwan has just been eliminated. It's another guy Helmuth has tangled with elsewhere. Dwan has been called the next Phil Ivey, and at another table, the current Phil Ivey. Phil Ivey is looking to add to his formidable chip stack. Ivey led out on the turn with 18,000. And his opponent folds, and the train keeps her rolling. I offered to massage Phil Ivey, you know, to help him, but he called security. With two bracelets already won, Phil is having a terrific 2009 World Series. There's Billy Wallbeck also having a great World Series. He's all in with a set of fours, trying to double up against the pair of aces of Jonas Gutek. One card to come. The river card is a king, and Wallbeck doubles up to 108,000. This year, Wallback are first, second, third, and sixth place finish. But no one's had a better World Series than Jeffrey Lissandro. Three bracelets so far. Fellow Australian and 05 world champ Joe Hashem is at another table in a hand with Larry Kolk after the flop. Joe bets 6,000. Hashem's had a bad World Series. No cashes in 09. Action on Kolk. He raises enough to put Joe all in, and Joe calls. A flush draw for Colt, All pocket queens for Hashem. Hashem is in sort of good shape, like uh, Bill Gaze's earlier. He's got to dodge a flush draw to survive his all-in. Turn card's a four, Colk adds a straight draw. Colk needs an ace, a six, or a spade to knock Hashem out. Hashem hates to watch the river card, but it's a ten. He'll win the hand to double up. It's never easy, man. Nice turn, huh? Always nice to see Joe Hashem smiling. I can't look. I'm too much of a chicken. <laughs> Joe Hashem still with us, and now with 60,000 chips. Let's go back to our featured table where Phil Helmuth has been picking off his rivals and welcomes the next challenger to his realm. Action on Phil. Looks down at Jack 10 of hearts. Raise it. Raise. Helmuth under the gun, firing away. Three times the big blind to 1,800. To his left, Daniel Vorbeck with pocket queens. Vorbeck, a student from Copenhagen. And he's going to re-raise to 6,600. 6, Helmuth, perhaps, with some uh, Northern European flashbacks. <laughs> so a raise and a re-raise is sure to get some folks out of the hand. Calhoun gives it up, as does Schechter. So the raise back to Phil now. Phil can't see the percentages. He's behind. Phil doesn't need to see percentages. He makes the call. It just feels like role reversal for the poker brat today. He keeps calling the types of spots in which he usually harangues other players about. The flop now. Eight, ace, ace. Vorbeck, a huge advantage. Yeah, look at the percentages. Phil checks. Phil checks. Vorbeck, you want to play it safe? Yep. Turn card, please. Turn card now. Is a six. His queens are best, so Vorbeck gets the check mark. Helm you first to act. How many chips you have there? Ask him how many chips he has. <laughs> 16. 
Well, maybe Phil is going to dazzle us. He's devising a master plan right 19, now. He's going to represent the ace with 19,000. The avant-garde play there. He bets more than the pot on a total bluff. Just in case you have the red queens, I don't want the diamond to come. Phil puts him on the right hand. You know, Phil now representing the ace, as you mentioned, which he would have checked on the flop if he had it. Warbex not buying Phil's act and calls. Well, the Northern European, a 22-year-old to boot, understands Phil a little better than he'd like. <laughs> That's scary. River card is a six. Does Helmuth want to fire a second barrel? Well, he can't win it unless he bets at it. Check it. He checks. Orbeck, just in case, checks. Phil shuts down Operation Swagglefoos without further damage. <laughs> Orbeck siphons off over 25000 from Phil. I told him he was going to overplay Queens against me, and I was going to bust him. But not yet. Well, that didn't take long. Phil uncovers a brand new foil. Watch out, Daniel Vorbeck. The poker brat is coming after you, and he knows where you live. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rio. Let's get right to table two. Last year's third place finisher, Dennis Phillips, is still in the fight for a return trip to the final table. Phillips looks down at 9-8 of spades. I call. Oh. He's going to call for 1,000. Next in line is Chip Profili, a carpenter from Coatesville, Pennsylvania, with pocket jacks. And he's going to raise it up to 4,100. Maria Mayernick with pocket aces. Oh. And she's going to show. Oh, wow. An easy all-in for Maria, looking to take it down now, or go heads up against an inferior hand. Back to Dennis now. Dennis only has 1,000 invested. I can't call. And he does lay it down. So now Profili with one of the toughest decisions in the game. He's got pocket jacks. The Lon McCarran Memorial hand. <laughs> not that much. <laughs> it's not high. Maria starts working the sales floor here. Profili does have her covered. <sighs> You mentioned he's a carpenter. Right now, carpentry seems a lot easier than poker. Anything's easier than playing pocket jacks. But he can't lay him down. Call. <laughs> Which does he had? <laughs> okay, baby. Good luck. Thank you. you I'm not going to say the same. I'm not going to gonna say the same because it will be insincere, even though it's been really nice playing with That's you. That's an honest that statement. <laughs> Come on, baby. All right, the flop. Nine five seven. Maria's still good with the aces. Yeah, pretty safe flop for pocket aces. Come on, give me a dime. Give me a diamond. I'll take a diamond. Six puts a straight now draw on the board. Come on, baby. Come on, eight. Phillips would have hit a straight if he'd stuck around. You can Oops. do it. Profili can only knock out Mayernick with a river jack. The river card is a tray, and Maria doubles up through the jacks. But you're not out, so don't shake my hand. You still have a lot of chips. I had 9 8 of spades. I flopped top pair and open in. I wasn't going anywhere. You would have made a straight? Yeah. You played it very well. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah. I really appreciate it. No, I allowed you to give it to me. I'll take it. You did. You I'll played it exactly anything. the way you should have. Maria, the you former film and television writer in Brazil, happy to get praise from Phillips. Let's go to the field. We find another player who knows a thing or two about the entertainment industry, actor Lou Diamond Phillips. He's in a hand with John Manetti, who makes a 10,000 chip bet on the river. Phillips calls and turns over a set of sevens to win the pot. Lou Diamond Phillips is one of the first celebrities I ever linked to poker. Him and James Woods. Where is James Woods? Sing for the cameras. <laughs> One more time. Come on. They're, they're, they're recording you now. You gotta sing. That's just it. I'm not going to sing for when they're recording. Are you kidding me? you got to pay for that kind sing, of stuff. Sing uh, La Vida Loca. What are you, you know? From one Hollywood star to a hoop star in Hollywood, Jordan Farmar has just Ooh. won a hand. How's it going, man? You got to be scared. <laughs> you know what scares me? Watching Jordan Farmar play defense. Clap it on up, dude. That's Jordan's brother, Matthew. The Laker guard just recently learned how to play Texas Hold'em, but so far he's finding his hoop skills go a long way at the poker table. I'm a member of the Los Angeles Lakers right now, world champions, just in case you weren't paying attention this season. I started playing poker the day before I flew out here. I didn't know what a small blind, big blind, all that stuff was. I knew poker hands and which hand would beat the next one, but I went to the casino and they had all these different games on the board. I was like, what are they playing in the World Series? I learned, sat there for an hour, got the hang of it, flew out here and got it cracking. The river, you got me on the river. I'm a point guard by nature. Just like the whole art of it. 
knowing the situation, know people's tendencies in, in their game. You know, if I know I'm playing against Chris Paul or Steve Nash, I'm gonna have to play against pick and rolls, and that's what they do. Here, some guys just don't bluff. So you know that if they're gonna put some money out there, that they have something good, you have to you know, have something that can compete with them. Here we go again. I play to win, and it definitely translates over here. I think that's what helped me get to the level I'm at in terms of my basketball career, and that's what helped me stay here. Farmar is following in the footsteps of Lakers owner Jerry Buss, who has cashed twice at the World Series. All right, let's head back to the featured table. Phil Helmuth has over 124,000 chips right now, about 100,000 more than he started the day with. Actually, we'll start on Matt Calhoun. Two World Series caches on his resume, pocket sixes. Calhoun's played in the last couple ante up for Africa tournaments. He finished fifth last year. Got knocked out of the very first hand this year. He raised it to 2,500. Schechter with ace, queen of hearts. Our first ace, queen sighting in a while. Get rid of it, son. Sorry he makes the call. He'll be sorry he made the call. <laughs> exactly. Help me with kings. Bill's going to go to work. How much you have there anyway? I'm just curious. Mm, right around 70. The World Series should hire someone to write down updated chip totals and, and hand them the fill after every pot. <laughs> Well, Phil has taken out both earpieces. That usually means a big hand. And he does re-raise it to 10,000. Phil re-raises. That will get Vorbeck out of the hand. It's folded back to Calhoun. He's only got one earpiece out. That's usually a small this pocket pair. I just, for some reason, I just want to win this pot right here. Phil is talking a whole lot during hands. I'm sick. You are, actually. I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> Calhoun needs 7,500 to call. And with the pocket sixes, he does. Action on Schechter. Not put Sean Jacks. We're still three-handed. Phil should not be talking about somebody else's hand. Oh, yeah, right. Sorry, I can't say right. Not put me on Jacks. I can say that, right? Schechter with ace-queen suited. Needs 7,500. He lays it down. Yeah, yeah, let's not. I haven't had a penalty this whole trip. I don't want to have one now. <laughs> Wouldn't it be <laughs> ironic if a friendly Phil gets a penalty for non-abusive talk? He's being awfully amicable. The flop, queen, eight, king. Helmuth hits the set of kings. It's not very good for my jacks. Calhoun checks. Yo, maybe the new Phil doesn't rant anymore. He just plays with his chips. The set of kings. You might have a diamond. I better bet something. A small bet screaming for a call. 7,000. 7,000. Phil goes into his cocoon. Calhoun lays it down. Don't do that. <laughs> That's what we call top set. That's what we call showing your cards too That's often, a, buddy. Yeah. Phil's showing a lot of hands. Phil wow. Helmuth winning a lot of hands. And this table, Calhoun included, can't believe Helmuth is running so good. I wish I went to bed it now. He could not have been drawing live, right? It has been a red-letter day for Phil, winning even when misplaying his hand. Can he be stopped? The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Welcome back to the Rio as this last day two session of the main event continues. Let's get back to the feature table where Phil Helmuth can do no wrong today. You know, Phil's got a black belt poker course online. It's like 150 bucks. I didn't want to pay for it, but it includes a live teleseminar with Sensei Phil. <laughs> On the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Pocket Cam, Matt Calhoun with Queen Jack. Offsuit calls for 1,000. Schechter folds. Phil Helmuth now looks down at pocket queens. Phil claimed Vorbeck would overplay queens. Let's see if Phil, Phil does. 5,500 is a raise from Phil. Is that overplaying queens? I never question Phil's authority. <laughs> Vorbeck now in the small blind with ace king off suit. And he's going to repop it to 17,500. That's a serious re-raise. It often means aces or kings. Big blind folded. Calhoun also gets out of the way. Now back to Phil. He needs 12,000. You and me again, huh? Northern California versus Northern Europe. Traffic's bad in Northern California. It is bad. Phil makes the call. Chance to collect another chunk of chips. The one with his main man, Vorbeck, now. The flop is for Jack Seven. Phil's Queens now a three to one favorite. That missed Vorbeck. Phil's got to like that flop. No threat to his Queens. 
A check from Vorbeck. Check, check. Check, check. Phil kind of feigning weakness. Turn card is a four. Vorbeck gets no help there. Phil's got to like that turn, too. Vorbeck thinking about it, though. He checks. 11,000. I think you have tens. Phil bets it. Poker Brad is chatty Cathy today. Vorbeck lays it down. Oh, you got away this time, didn't you? Don't worry. I'm not messing around. Good a flip. Phil shows another hand. And takes another pot. Should sure I call two parallel in? It depends. I might call all in. Why not? I don't care. I don't know. I gotta go with my read. I mean, if you bust me, bust me. I mean, I, I really don't care. If my read says call, I'm calling. I'm not gonna try to ante away. You know what I'm saying? Why did I take English lessons? Phil dominating this featured table right now as he dominated in his 1989 victory in a field of 178 players. Taking a look at the growth of the main event field. Small leaps in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, but a huge jump after Moneymaker won. And one of the best players in the game is still in action. Jeffrey Lissandra with over 150,000 chips right now. Seems like Lissandra has had a lot of chips in front of him for a month running. Indeed, Lissandra looking for his fourth World Series bracelet of this year. And it's been a picture-perfect day for Phil Ivey. Remember, no flash photography, please. Phil picking up a lot of chips on this day, too. Right now, trying to get some from Peter Jetton. Just put the fake, the fake swallow on me. My man Phil Ivey does not usually fall for the fake swallow. Jet bet 10,000 on the river into Phil. Peter known as apathy to the online world as a poker coach. Phil makes the call, and Peter shows aces up for the win. Ivey fell for the fake swallow. Bad news for both of us. I got to go talk to him. Peter will no doubt use that as a training aid in the future. Phil can't win them all, but still over 200,000 chips. Let's pick up action on Kent Center in a hand right now with one of the November 9 from last year, Elon Schwartz, on a flop of 5-4 jack. Elon pushes all in. It's been his dream to play here, and Kent Center has had a lot of tough decisions and tough hands. His wife, Patty, looking on, can hardly stand the pressure. And Kent will lay it down. Elon takes the pot. Schwartz fourth last year in the main event and finished third in an earlier World Series event this year. And Kent learned a lesson there that a lot of players learned last year. It's hard going up against Elon Schwartz. Don't kick yourself, Kent. At table two, another member of the November 9, Dennis Phillips, has been making it difficult for his table mates as well. He's a huge favorite right now with his pocket aces to Maria Marinick's King Jack. Both check the flop. Turn card now. Is a king of spades, Dennis with a nut flush draw, Maria a pair of kings. And Dennis with a pair of aces and the nut flush draw, pretty sweet. Maria checks. Dennis bets 5,000. Call. Maria will make the call with the kings. Be careful with my money. I will, don't worry. I'm always careful. Maria looking for help. Dennis a huge favorite as we go to the river. The river card now is the jack of spades while Phillips hits the nut flush while Maria catches Kings up. Maria checks. Four spades on the board. Phillips with the flush. That's 5,000. Did you bet that river without a big spade? Oh my God, my brain hurts. <laughs> Phillips once again looking to extract value on the river. Take your time. Take your time calmly like that? Yeah. What the hell is going on? Oh, sorry. <laughs> hmm. I'm sorry. One second. One second is up. Why just five? Is it a thin value bet? Are you betting the spade? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to confuse you. Is it working? It is. <laughs> I don't see how I can fold, but... That's why he bet 5,000. Maria calls. I thought you might come over the top. Ah. Shut up. Dennis was looking to get more. I had two pair. Okay. I was done by the river. Ouch. I thought I was good the whole way. I honestly you thought weren't. I was good he the was. Whole way. Okay. I believe you. Don't believe her. Go, Dennis. Always with those aces. Yeah, bye bye your chips. Gotcha. Mm. 
That truck horn seems a little weak, but Dennis Phillips is running on all cylinders. Back at the Rio, everyone still left, remaining hopeful they'll be playing on day three, including NBA player Jordan Farmar. He's in a hand with Adilson Cotram, two aces, two sevens, and a deuce on the board. Farmar bets 20,000. Oh, man. Cotram re raises all in. All in for real. Yeah. I call. Okay. All in and call. Cotram shows an ace for a full house. Farmar. Also has an ace. He had the better oh. kicker until the river race forced the split pot. Got an ace. Well, see, Farmar didn't play good defense there. He actually gave up half the pot on the river. <laughs> I can't suck it. Farmar may know how the game is played, but the guy playing poker above the rim is Laker fan Phil Ivey in a hand right now with Mark Terry. Phil bets 18,000 on the river. You might be bluffing with the best hand. Well, if Ivy is bluffing with the best hand, Terry should fold, no? Yeah. Mark Terry. Is he reaching for chips? Yeah, he makes the call. Ivy shows pocket fours for a full house. My man, Phil Ivy. Good offense, good defense, no trash talk. <laughs> well, Ivy's instincts are working well today. The same can usually be said for Jen Harmon at another table. Her poker success comes in large part from being able to read opponents at crucial moments, as we see in this edition of Deal Me In, brought to you by FullTiltPoker.net. In the 2005 World Series Rio Circuit event, Harmon had to piece together a tell she got from a familiar foe, Jean Rivera Ballon. John Rivera plays aggressive and he will bet with nothing. Uh, so when he bet on the flop, I called him to see what he was going to do on the turn. Jennifer's not going anywhere. She'll call. And when he bet on the turn, there was something the way he bet clicked in my brain that I had him beat. John Rivera bets pretty fast and there was like a small pause on the turn that he did that just didn't ring true for John Rivera style. I made the decision if I was calling him on the turn, I was calling him on the river. Jennifer Harmon wins the hand, wins the pot. That's why it's so important to stay focused in a poker game because there's, you know, there's so many subtleties that you'll miss if you don't. Jen doesn't always pick up subtleties at home, though. Marco told me his stomach was growling for more than an hour the other day, and she didn't make him dinner. <laughs> As we head over to the featured table, it's time to test your poker reading ability with the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Wild Card Hand. One player's whole cards will be concealed. Action begins on Phil Helmuth. Phil has the wild card hand. I got to figure him out. From the small blind, he calls. In a battle of the blinds, you're going to vary your play. Phil might just call there with pocket aces or kings, but I think he's got jack 10 off. Vorbeck checks his option with six deuce off. And these two will go to the flop. It is eight, five, five. Vorbeck missed. Well, Phil might want to buy the pot right here with his hypothetical jack 10. <laughs> he checks. If you're Vorbeck, you got to figure the flop missed Phil, so he might want to try to buy the pot. He checks. Warbeck doesn't want to put any loose change into this pot. Turn card now. A six of hearts. That pairs Vorbeck. Oh, by the way, if, if Phil had the pocket aces or kings, this would be the time to stop slow playing. Still slow plays. Nah, he's got nothing. <laughs> Vorbeck with the two pair now. Well, Vorbeck should probe here with a small bet. He does. A thousand. Oh, it's like I'm in his ear. Daniel Phil makes the call. I can't believe Phil's calling there with nothing unless he has some grand plan to steal the pot on the river. River card is an ace. It's a good card to steal with. I don't think that that, that ace hit Phil at all. Okay. River card is an Tell ace me. of hearts. 2,500. We'll bet it, though. 2,500. If Phil had pocket aces, he would have bet before the river. Even if he just had one ace, I think he would have raised pre-flop or bet earlier. Now Vorbeck. Well, I think Phil's grand plan, available on his black belt poker course, was to call the turn and bluff the river. So if I'm Vorbeck, I'm calling Phil's Jack-10 off. He calls. Jacks. Oh, Jacks? Never mind. Poker's a tough game. <laughs> With pocket jacks, he gave Warbeck the chance to catch a card on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky wild card hand. I never put him on jacks. That was too weird for me. 
Was it, yeah, I'm not used to I mean, I just limped in and checked it all the way. It's kind of a weird hand, huh? Did you say weird hand or weird man? You're about max value, but I mean... <laughs> I gave you a million outs, didn't I? I thought a jack was coming on the river. I was going to win like 50. Bill does add a small pot to his growing chip stack, but more importantly, has everyone else at this table off balance. Welcome back to the Rio, where we are drawing closer to the conclusion of day two, and many players just looking to hang on in advance. At table two, Maria Mayernick has taken a couple of hits to her stack from Dennis Phillips and is trying to regroup. She's watching Dennis in a hand right now with Marciano Evel after the flop. Dennis with two pair, aces and nines. Evel also with two pair, but aces and sixes. Evel now calls Dennis's re-raise. You know, I'm tired of looking at that Mike Sexton autograph on Dennis's cap. Dennis <laughs> barely even shakes my hand. <laughs> a jack of clubs on the turn is no threat to Phillips. Dennis first to act. He leads out with 15,000. Sometimes it's hard to remember that Dennis Phillips is an amateur. He carries himself like he's been around a long time. And people respect him much as they would a big-time pro. Evel calls. Well, Evel has no idea who Dennis is. River card. Evel looking to catch up. Seven of clubs. That does not help Evel. Dennis with the check mark. And Dennis now checks. No value bet there from Phillips. He's not sure about this one. Check. Evel checks. Two pair. Aces and nines. Aces and nines. Two pair. Oh, Evel is crushed. That was bad luck. I tell you, Dennis is not a commercial truck manager anymore. He's a poker guy. Kind of a cooler. And having a good run so far here in 2009. At another table, 2008 champ Peter Eastgate is all in, but leading with two pair after the turn. Frank Ward with a pair of tens can still send Eastgate home. Ten or Jack. Or deuce. <laughs> Ten Jack or deuce knocks out the defending champ. River card. Is another six, and Eastgate gets better. He hits the full house to double up again. Eastgate on the edge today, now feeling flush. That's my, this is my high point. This is my peak. <laughs> That's why he's the world champ. It's been a long, tough day of poker for Kent Center and wife Patty, who's been here the whole time supporting her husband. Right now, Kent and a hand with Billy Gaze is again on a flop of King 10-5. Kent will act first and bets 5,000. You know, privately, I think a lot of Billy Gaze's friends don't think he's ever going to win a bracelet. And he will fall to Kent Center. And Kent will take that pot. Well, Kent Center taking a small pot, and he still has a pretty small chip stack. But Kent does not have any quit in him. He'll be fighting for every chip, and that's the way the game should be played. Back now to the featured table, which has been all Phil Helmuth. He's been bobbing and weaving and bluffing and bullying his way to a healthy chip stack. Action will begin on Matt Calhoun from Phoenix, Arizona. He looks down at pocket trays. He's traveled to every state in the U.S. except Hawaii. No bridge. How do you miss Hawaii? No bridge. He calls for 1,000. Bill Helmuth with an ace of hearts. And Phil, king of clubs. He's king on a raise to 10,000. Phil bets the chips quicker than he squeezes the cards. I wonder if that's black belt poker. He's folded back around to Calhoun and his small pocket pair. He makes the call. That's gutsy. Yeah, I might have given Phil credit for a big pair there. Well, people love to play with Helmuth. The flop, 5-8-7. Calhoun's small pocket pair is still best. Yeah, that's actually a good flop for Calhoun. It completely missed Phil. Calhoun checks. Phil checks behind him. Turn card now is another eight. Calhoun is still best now. And this time he puts out 15,000. What in the world is going on here? Uh-oh, Mount uh, Helmuthicus might be ready to erupt. It's called $9,000 raise. He's been so nice up to this point. Oh, Phil is wandering toward the valley of unhappiness. He folds. How weird they play. Have a beat. It's called $9,000 raise. Phil bothered by this idiot from Northern Arizona. <laughs> well, Calhoun stood up to help you, then got some of his chips. Ow. Here you go, sir. I made a 10000 He limped in for a dime. And all I'm playing is some nuts you re raised it, Phil. I had to pick you off once. Don't worry. I understand exactly what you're thinking. That's why I didn't raise the last six times you limped. Because I knew you were going to get hee-haw with it a little bit. We all knew the real poker brat was lurking. Some things never really change. Yeah. There 
was a lot of action at the Rio as we concluded day two of the main event. Don't do that. For some, day two was the end of the line. Always next year, boys. For others, it was a small step towards the title. Looking forward to day three. Table mates Troy Weber and Dan Bilzerian remain near the top of the leaderboard. Many pros head to day three poised to make a deep run, while Kent Center continues his inspirational journey through the main event. Celebs from Hard Rock and the Hard Court it's all good, baby. also moved on. But looming largest among our remaining field is Phil Ivey. I'm very pleased with the way I'm playing, and hopefully I'll go to distance this Sunday. And Phil Helmuth. I'm not going to back down to anybody. If I have to play more hands to win, I will. If I have to play less hands to win, I will. Okay. For Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. See you next time from the World Series of Poker.